Hi there. Uh, let's talk about creating technical documentation in Confluence. My name is Matt. I'm a customer advocate at K15T, and I work with the team that makes scroll apps, which are meant for technical writing in Confluence. Uh, but before that, I was a tech writer working on a team. We were using a waterfall process. So the team would work on a bunch of stuff, coding things up. They would pass it on to me and they would say, hey, use that legacy technical writing app that you have installed on your laptop and write some documentation for us. And this led to all kinds of problems, including delaying releases because we didn't have the documentation ready. So the team moved to an agile process. So we were working on everything together with tools like Jira and Bitbucket Everything was internet connected. It was really great, except I was still using this old app on my laptop. And so I looked for a more collaborative approach and I came across Confluence. And Confluence was great because we could all get together and create content really, really quickly. They could give me feedback on my writing and then get back out there and do what they loved. Now, this was all well and good, right? We can create content together, but there's things that technical writers need to be able to do, and I was really doubtful that we could do them in Confluence. And so I asked, why Confluence? Above all other tech writing tools, is this really going to do what we need it to do? So let's take these questions and take a look at how you can do these things using the scroll apps by K15T. So first, let's talk about creating topics. So a topic is a way of structuring content within technical writing. And typically, your documentation is made up of many, many different topics, different types of topics. So that each one is formatted differently. So you might have uh, a task topic, which is a list of steps, or you might have a reference topic, which is sort of a table with additional information. But the way you create these in Confluence is using templates, which is a feature built right into Confluence. So you can very quickly create different templates so that when team members get started, they can say, mm, yeah, this is the type of thing I'm documenting. Once they're in there, they can read instructional text that you've added. Instructional text helps them as they begin their writing process. And then as soon as they write, it disappears. There's also template variables, so people can easily replace multiple pieces of text. I haven't seen this used too much, but it's cool to know that it's there. But one of the big powerful things here is you can suggest things to people who are starting a topic. So you don't have to uh, you know, guide them through every step of the process, but you can say, hey, this should be written in this way. You should have this type of thing here. Hey, our style is this. You don't have to tell team members, yes, you can write documentation, but you need to take eight hours and memorize our style guide. They can just jump into a template and start structuring things the way that every other topic of that type is structured. You can also do amazing things with macros. So Confluence macros, that type of concept doesn't exist in any other tech writing tool. Uh, for example, with the child macro, I can, or the child page macro, I can quickly dynamically render a list of all child pages and links to each of those. That would require hiring a consultant and building a customization in any other tech writing solution. There are so many amazing things you can do with macros and it enables teams that don't have time to write those kinds of customizations to build an amazing help experience. Also, you can add images really easily. And this might sound crazy, but this is hard to do in some tech writing tools. You can add images, set sizes, add alt text, which is really important for accessibility and SEO. You can also add videos to your content. Again, very difficult with some tech writing solutions and super, super easy in Confluence. You can add dynamic diagrams using apps like Draw.io or Gliffy. Your team can build diagrams right in Confluence. This is much better than an approach like what most teams have to do where they create diagrams in maybe Visio and then they have to export it as a PNG and then they have to upload that and then if Ever, the diagram is updated, they have to make sure they update that in their documentation. Instead, the diagram lives in Confluence and it's rendered dynamically so it looks great on any screen size. So now let's talk a little bit about collaboration. So Confluence is really, really great for this. There's the comments area at the bottom of the page, which is great for long form conversations. Or the thing that my team loved the most is inline comments where you can, you can select the exact piece of text you want to talk about and have a conversation right there. With at mentions, it's really easy to bring the right stakeholders in to review the content, give their thoughts, and get back to work. Uh, this is incredibly powerful. 
And then of course there's the collaborative editor, which is great for multiple team members writing different documentation about the same thing, or even writing together, giving critiques, doing a pair writing process, which is a great way to train and to learn. And then there's workflows. So if you're using the Scroll Versions app from K15T, there's a really basic workflow you can use to track where a page is in your team's writing process. Or you can use Comella Document Management and build an extensive workflow with multiple different steps and approvers, which is really great if you're working in a regulated environment. Then there's content reuse, which is being able to write one piece of content and using it across multiple pages in your documentation. So there's a few different ways to do this. The first concept from the technical writing world is short descriptions. And you write a short description in an excerpt macro. A short description is literally on every page in your space, and it's the short description of the content that's on that space. It should be able to sum up everything that's there. And these are very, very useful. So you write that in an excerpt macro right at the top of your Confluence page. And here's where it gets powerful. Say, on a page, I use the child display macro, and I set that excerpt to show. Not only will it render a list of links to the pages, but now it's going to show those short descriptions for every one so that users know, oh, okay, this is what this page is about. That's really powerful content reuse but we're just getting started. Let's say there's bigger pieces of content, maybe this procedure uh, here, so a set of steps. It's just a chunk of content, but I wanna do this set of steps in multiple places in my documentation. I've written this content on a page in a particular area that's tucked away from where users normally are. I'm calling it my inclusion library. I've added this to a page, and I have multiple of these different resource pages with content on them that I want to reuse. So I kind of group them in a collection of tasks, right? Because they're all different pieces of content that are tasks for users to accomplish. And then I can group those all together within this space in a hierarchy and organize an entire library of reusable content. This is really powerful because I can then use an include plus macro to go and select a particular piece of content that I want to reuse in my space. And I can reuse this in hundreds of pages if I want. And then users will just see a piece of content. This is really great. And then my team can go in at any time, update that one resource in the include library, and that content is updated throughout the entire documentation space. Then there's conditional content, which is showing different content to the users based on who they are, what platform they're on, you really get to decide. So this is based on what are called attributes. So for example, you might have an audience attribute. So you have different content for developers, administrators, or users. Or another really popular one is platform. Maybe you have content that's different for iOS or Android. So you build one or more attributes when you're setting these up. And then when you're authoring content, you use conditional content macros. So you, you can say, for example, these steps apply to administrators and developers on iOS. And these steps apply to administrators and developers on Android. Then when users are viewing this content, they can select, yes, I'm an administrator and I use iOS and they'll only see the steps that are viable for them. And this isn't just on a content level. You can have an entire page, like say this guide for setting up an IDE that only applies to developers. You can hide that from all other users. Another really powerful thing that tech writers need is versioning. So with versioning, this is different than Confluence where it keeps track of changes that are made to pages. Instead, it keeps track of all the changes made to all the pages in an entire space. And it keeps those changes held back until you choose, hey, I wanna share this with my users. This is really important because when 1.0 is out there and live, you need to be working on 2.0 in the background and publish it when it's ready and when you release the product. So with scroll versions, it adds a version picker so people can choose which version of content they wanna be writing in. This is based on an inheritance structure. So if you make changes to version 2.0, for example, they won't be reflected in 1.0, which is great because you're adding a new feature in 2.0. It shouldn't exist in 1.0. You can also see the content roll up into 3.0. So make a change in 2.0, it's reflected in 3.0 and 4.0 and so on because that feature continues to exist.
You can also schedule changes. So for example, if you documented a new feature that you thought was coming in 3.0, but turns out it has to wait till 4.0, you can select those pages that have been changed and you can reschedule them to that future version. Then there's languages. Maybe you have an audience of uh, multilingual users. With the Scroll Translations app, you can translate your content into multiple languages right within your Confluence space. So in this example, authors can pick from three different languages. Uh, you write in a source language, and then you can see which pages need to be translated into the language that you've selected. So for example, here, I'm translating from English into German, and uh, you can do that right here, side by side in the editor, or if you'd rather, you can export the content in English or whatever your source language is uh, using the XLIF format. And that can be imported into a, con a, a translation management system, or you can give it to a third party translator to work with. Once the translation process is done, you can re-import this into Confluence, and then that new language is now present and viewable right in the space. Then finally, there's publishing, which is, okay, we've written the content, Let's share it with people. And the great thing is with scroll apps, you can do single source publishing, meaning you wrote it all in Confluence and you can share it using multiple mediums. So one option you have is you could use one of our scroll exporter apps, scroll PDF exporter or scroll word exporter to export a completely customized document that fits your brand look and feel all everything from text uh, to sizing to table of contents, you can make it look exactly the way you want it to look for those users who really want a document in their hand. Another option is you could use our scroll HTML exporter app to export the content for offline use within a browser. This is great if you're in a regulated environment where users don't get to have internet connections like maybe in a bank. Another option would be to use scroll viewport. This displays all the content within your space or spaces as a full help site that can be customized to match your brand look and feel and has been optimized for content skimming and findability, which we know is really important for users. Another option with scroll viewport is context sensitive help. That is, you can use an iframe within your app to display help content directly in your user's experience. You can even specify in the URL, hey, this user is using this version and they need this variant of the content. So they can see exactly the information they need to accomplish what they're looking to do. This builds a really, really great information experience and we're really excited about this. So can Confluence really do all the things a technical writer needs to do? And can it do it in a collaborative way? Yeah, yeah, it definitely can. So you may have felt like I was skimming over a lot of this. I really was. If you head over to Rock the Docs, you can see full information on all the things I talked about, plus much, much more. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it and enjoy collaborating on technical documentation as a team.